Hey, Bree, Mike here. Uh, thank you so much for posting your reference images. That helps a lot and it helps me get a better understanding of where you're looking to go with this and what you're trying to achieve. So I'm going to go through them one at a time because they're very different scenarios, different, very different scenes. Uh, so we'll start with the outside, then we'll work inside. So I want to start with the reference. Overall, it looks like you're going for, uh, you know, like you said in your description, a very soft uh, morning, dawn, kind of glow effect to everything. And um, and that's really cool. Uh, with both of these reference, uh, with both of these mood boards that you've created here, the question that I have for you is the amount of saturation that you want. So like in, you know, this, I think this is from her, uh, from the her reference, it's very desaturated versus like some of these two at the top that are very, very saturated. So that's just something that you want to play with um, and kind of hone in on. The one that I really want to focus on is this one down here, because I think this is really nice for a few reasons. One, uh, it's a similar situation to what you have in which your character is very small. And so we can really focus in here on the middle. And the way that this artist is doing it is a few ways. Uh, the first is really highlighting the path that they're on and kind of leading us right there. And then it's the, the artist is also really working. Uh, it's doing a very good job of, of, of crafting values to create uh, a light over dark, like light over dark and dark over light. And you can see it here, let me get even closer. So we've got this woman and we've got this guy, right? So we've got the woman with a very dark shape reading over this kind of lighter background down here. Sorry, this guy got very big when I zoomed in this much. Um, but the one thing that the artist is doing is around her blonde head is making, if you look at the area right around it, like this is all kind of darker shades versus him which is uh, he's kind of dark throughout, except for this little bit of, of light. Uh, you can see all around him is going to be a little bit lighter because we're gonna uh, use those dark values over the light background to help shape it. And there's a couple of these darker rocks nearby to help frame them in, this area to frame them in. Um, and, then we, and then to kind of finish off, we've got these volumetric lights coming down this way that really help sell that last final look. And then anything else in the foreground, uh, anything else around is just kind of secondary to that. So we've got like little rims here. We have just like little bits of highlights in certain areas just to kind of pick up some of the detail. But if you kind of squint your eye at it, which is always my technique for making sure that we're uh, focusing the viewer's eye in the right location, if you just kind of squint at it, you can see that all the all that kind of that that's auxiliary stuff around the sides melts away and we really focus in on the center. So now I want to have that in mind when I go back uh, to yours here. And you're doing a good job of getting the small character to read over the dark background, but you're kind of kind of kind of you're going to kind of get that anyway, just on the framing of it. Right. So I think we have a little bit more room. We don't have to quite go this dark with the surroundings. It's a little bigger. Um, and because what I think, like if if I look at this. I think what's happening is we're kind of uh, flipping the script of what we just saw. Like we're getting more brightness around the rims and then a dark in here and then this little bit of pop here. I think that we actually have the room to create more light in here, allow this area to go dark and then just have this last little bit of pop of light. Because it's not actually making sense because we have light here going up into the darkness there and then a lot of light on this character. But I'm not seeing that light really anywhere else in this region. So what I want to do is I want to focus you in and I want you to, it feels also like this character has been on a journey to get to this point. And whenever there's a journey, I like to create a visual path. So, okay. So this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we need to have um, a light either coming in from this way or this way. Uh, I'll let you play around with it to see which one you think works better. But the main focus is going to be a few things. One, we're going to want to create shaping on this um, cave. Number two, we're going to want to create some sort of pocket of light that um, reinforces this, this trail. And then number three, we want to kind of darken out here to kind of create all the focus back in that area there. Um, from there, the biggest things are, again, that... Sorry, I had a little glitch there. So yeah, so we've got, um, again... Focus some light here on the center and then use that to create some shaping on here. Uh, allow this, you know, continue this to go dark. It's okay if we can pick up a little bit of light going back in here. So it feels like that's somewhere that they're going to go into. A um, little pocket of light there. If you can, a little bit of a path leading up this way and then just kind of allow the rest of this to fall into darkness. And when I say darkness, I don't necessarily mean like pitch black or anything, but think like this value. 
kind of like shadow, but also you're picking up some little highlights on things. You know, they're kind of falling into some spaces. If you really want, you can throw in some volumetric light coming down uh, from whatever way the key light's coming from. I don't think that's necessarily necessary with this shot, but um, the main thing is, is that we want to pull some of the focus off of the surroundings and pull it right into here and then really kind of highlight this this guy up a little bit. And now, if you if you want to make it feel creepy, you could also make it like, although that would be a different time of day and a totally different look. I was trying to figure out a way to get some uh, bounce light coming up this way. And I was thinking like you could have like an intense kind of sun hitting here and then we could play off like a bounce light coming up and then hitting some of these things or like there and there and there. But um, but that might be a bit too much. But I would say overall, that's the structure you want to go for there. Um, in terms of this interior one, okay, let's look at the end. Again, we're, the one area I would like to question is uh, saturation level because again, we've got very desaturated here, desaturated here, but then like these are are much more saturated. So I would just say, you know, ask you to kind of dial that in and uh, just like kind of figure out, you know, make sure you're you're thinking that through. I really love the um, uh, Lord of the Rings reference, these guys down here, um, just in terms of they're, they're pretty similar to what you, uh, what you want to go for. And Lord of the Rings it has a reputation um, of being very um, like studio lit, like Hollywood, like not, it's not a lot of, like if you look at the night battle scenes from Lord of the Rings versus like Game of Thrones, the Game of Thrones stuff, and people complained about it. They said it was too dark. You couldn't see anything. You didn't know what was going on. Where Game of Thrones, they definitely didn't have that problem. There's like lots of studio light and you can kind of see it here. Um, like that is an unnatural amount of window light coming in there. Like that is a huge amount of window light coming in. Um, and that's definitely, definitely been kind of studio lit. This amount of light coming in this way, same deal. So uh, this one gets a little bit darker, but that's just because it's the mood of Strider and the bar and the whole thing. Um, so how this translates over for you is kind of how you want to play that up, depending on the mood that you want to create. Um, but the one big thing with this one that I'm seeing is that, and it took me a while to see it. So I stared at it for a while. I'm like, why doesn't this quite feel right? Like why, like there's something about it that was, that was irking me. And I think I got it. The biggest one is that uh, this overhead light. So if it depends on the time period that you're trying to set this in, is that that overhead light feels like a modern restaurant. Old um, bars, and if you look at reference from, again, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, um, I'm a nerd, so these are my <laughs> historic references, but... All of them, like the overhead lighting didn't happen until modern times, which you would, if you want to light this to look like a, a medieval castle bar thing, you're going to want to utilize these lights, lights on the table, lights coming in from the side. They're lights that are going to be uh, coming from the surface area and not from overhead. Overhead doesn't happen back then. So that's, that's, that was, was kind of throwing me off a little bit. Um, and then additionally, uh, a few things. One, I noticed this, like it looks like, this guy's kind of penetrating the table there. I would just watch out for that. Um, in terms of their shaping, like there's two, well, a lot of it's going to depend on when you take away that, that overhead light. I really like what you're doing with like getting the vignette here in the middle. I would, I would like to try and uh, keep that if we can um, by maybe putting, um, maybe even putting a candle in the foreground here, like, or like right in here so that we can kind of create, keep this and then the other big thing is like there's not enough sh there's just like not enough shaping in the background the way that we're seeing in like this shot how it's um you know closer up on him but we're like i mean you don't, you don't necessarily need like these candles back here but just like these subtle little bits of light hitting uh, some characters back here uh same i mean this is like an extreme example of it but like same thing here, like little bits of stuff being hit. I'm not quite sure what these are from. Let's hand of the king. That's a Lord of the Rings thing. Is that two? I guess so. Yeah. Okay. So um, with these, like you're again, you're just getting some more um, background stuff. And also, those are really good. Like if you look at the difference between these two, um, the main thing that makes like this one work a lot better is depth of field. So. The, this one's probably a little bit more of a better representation because it's about the distance that we're going through in your characters. I would go ahead and throw that background out of focus a little bit, but then, um, 
But before you do that, I would actually, it looks like it might be out of focus a little bit, but it's hard to tell because there's nothing like, there's like no detail back here. There's like, like, it looks like there's window panes. Um, Again, like you can do the Lord of the Rings thing and like really bring in a lot of blue light back there. But like it would just be nice to pick up some of those details back there. So those are my main takeaways. Like I would um, eliminate that overhead light and kind of recraft the light um, based on that. And then we can we can go from updates from there. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. If you want to totally disagree with me, uh, by all means, that's this is your thesis. This is a special project for you. This is the one thing that you... Um, like this is, unless you direct a film and create it on your own, this is the most control you'll ever have over a project. And so you need to hold on to that. So if anything that I say is not where you want to go, let me know and we can craft it based on your vision. So um, keep going, keep lighting. You're doing a good job. This all looks really cool. I want to see the project as a whole. Um, and then we'll go from there. All right. Happy lighting, Brie.